Welcome to the biggest shakeup in the 40 plus year history of BMW's beloved GS legacy. The all new R1300 GS and by all new, we really do mean every single component on the bike is more powerful, torquier, lighter and more sophisticated than the R1250 GS it takes over from. The R1300 GS is a true, literal, clean sheet design a totally redesigned engine, in a completely new chassis featuring technology that's never been seen on any production road bike before. And perhaps most controversially, there's also a dramatically different look from nose to tail. In the UK a base model BMW R1300 GS will cost £15,990, while the higher spec T version starts at £18,465. For the base model, that appears to be a whopping £1,000 price rise on top of a 2023 R1250 GS. However as the R1300 GS's base model spec is higher than the 1250s, it's not really accurate to directly compare the two. The clues in the name, but let's start with the increased capacity. The GS now features a bigger boxer, the total displacement boosted to exactly 1300cc up from the previous 1254cc design. This extra capacity hasn't been achieved by simply adding bigger pistons or a longer throw crank to the 1250, it's a completely new design. The R1300 GS motor is the most oversquare boxer engine yet with a massive 106, 5mm bore mated to a shorter 73mm stroke. Power and torque figures both represent a healthy increase over the 1250, peak power is up from 134 bhp to 143 bhp making for the most powerful production boxer engine ever. Maximum torque is up from 105 pound-feet to 110 pound-feet, but more importantly BMW say there's more grunt across the entire engine speed range. As evidence they offer the factoid that the 1300 motor makes at least 95 pound-feet of torque all the way from 3600 revolutions per minute to 7800 revolutions per minute. Maximum revs remains the same 9000 revolutions per minute as the 1250, hopefully offering reassurance that the new motor hasn't become any revier than before, despite its shorter stroke design. That all new goes much further than the motor, while every flagship GS has used a tubular steel frame for as long as anyone's known what a GS is, the R1300 GS is held together with something quite different. The main frame is now constructed from sheet steel, rather than tubular and is described by BMW as a shell design. They say this makes for more compact packaging and offers greater stiffness than the 1250, the bolt-on rear subframe is completely new too, and is now die-cast aluminium rather than tubular steel. Suspension has been thoroughly overhauled. The R1300 GS retains BMW's telelever system at the front end, though it's been updated to what BMW calls Evo telelever. Claiming to represent a hybrid of the sportier, stiffer telelever design used on the HP2 Sport and R1200S combined with the more flexible design of the previous GS, BMW say that Evo telelever is the best of both worlds with improved stability, more precise steering and reduced friction. Similarly BMW's paralever system at the back has been updated to Evo paralever, which claims to create a stiffer connection and uses a longer swing arm for improved traction. DSA moves electronic suspension onto the next level by not only offering the ability to adjust front and rear damping in real time, but now also being able to change spring rate too. The short version is that the suspension can now automatically adapt to offer a better ride across a wider range of use cases, from sporty solo riding to fully loaded two-up cruising. For years the GS has generally been considered one of the most comfortable motorcycles money can buy upright, relaxed, spacious and unstressed. 
Many consider it an even better bike for covering distance than BMW's own R1250RT Tourer, thanks to the GS's more generous legroom. So all eyes will be on whether the 1300 can match the same level of ergonomic luxury. BMW aren't giving us much to go on for now, only describing that the ergonomic triangle of the new R1300GS has been optimized for a sporty, relaxed riding position, but not offering any details of how it compares to the 1250. What they do highlight instead is the choice available for a rider to personalize the riding position, with four different seats, three footrests and different handlebars choices including a comfort bar as well as a 30mm bar riser. In addition, the optional adaptive ride height control will let shorter riders feel more at home without having to resort to a low seat, or a low seat height model with reduced suspension travel and compromised dynamics. The base model R1300GS comes with a higher specification than the base 1250. Four riding modes are now standard where the 1250 had three. All versions of the GS will come with cornering linked abs, traction control, engine braking control, cruise control and hill hold assistance. Standard equipment also includes a new lighting system with indicators built into handguards and a brand new LED headlight that's certain to split opinion. Where every GS since the 1150 has used an asymmetric, two light face that's become synonymous with the model, the 1300 boldly switches to a brand new X-shaped unit. The central LED unit at the middle of the X contains both low and high beams, while the four lines surrounding it serve as daytime running lights. BMW aren't subtle in singing its praises, claiming it illuminates the road with a hitherto unrivaled clarity, ensuring even better perception in traffic. There's also an option to equip the R1300GS with Headlight Pro, where the LED beam turns into the corner informed by the bike's lean angle sensor. That's just one of a very long list of optional extras including all the aforementioned additional riding modes, semi-active suspension, quick shifters and so on. Perhaps one of the most anticipated especially for those who spend a lot of time on the motorway as active cruise control. BMW are calling the GS's system riding assistant and it brings together a number of features. 